State versus path functions in thermodynamics. Okay, so now let's continue our discussion of thermo. And when we talk about a given system, we're going to say it's in a thermodynamic state. And so this discussion is going to help us understand what that means. In particular, for a given system, the thermodynamic state is characterized by some macroscopic observables that we can measure. So some things that we can actually see that are macroscopic. A few of these are pressure, temperature, volume, color, altitude, and other things. Okay, now look at some of these differences or changes in macroscopic observables here. And I'm using pressure, volume, and temperature as an example. Okay, so delta P, P final minus P initial. Okay, delta V, similar, except for now we're just talking about the volume. Same goes for the temperature. Now, what would we be able to say about all of these if we're just thinking about the initial and final state for the change in pressure, the change in volume, or the change in temperature? So what can we say about all of these examples? So in each case, we're going from an initial to a final, and we're calculating a difference. And one thing that we can say is that it doesn't matter how that system arrived at the final state from the initial state. The only thing that matters is that difference, okay? So if we go from some initial pressure to a final pressure, it doesn't matter if we go slowly or quickly. All that matters is that that change in pressure is the same. So we can say the same thing about the change in volume and the change in temperature. And this is basically the definition of a state function. It just means that it only depends on the current thermodynamic state of the system, where it started and where it arrived to. And how the system attained that state doesn't matter. Okay, so history doesn't matter, bottom line. Okay, so another example is compression of a gas in, inside a piston. Okay, so this is a delta V example. So here's our initial volume, and we can either push the piston slowly, or we can go more quickly, or we can do this much one day, come back and do this much, come back and do this much. But the bottom line is, if we're going to the same final volume, the delta V is going to be the same, regardless of which path we choose to take slowly, quickly, on a day-by-day -day basis, or any other path. So a state function is basically one of those properties of a system that depends only on the initial and final state. That's it, okay? So delta T is another one, change in temperature. Okay, here's our initial temperature, our final temperature. Delta T is the same regardless of if we just go in one step, like in this graph, or if we come over here and we go up to this temperature and then we just hang out there for a while, and then go up again, hang out, and then finally to our final temperature. If we look at the change in temperature, it's the same, and it doesn't matter if we took the direct path or the all around Robin Hood's barn path, okay? So either way is fine. Okay, so some other examples of state functions. So the change in internal energy is a state function. So delta U or delta E in some books is a state function. Some other state functions is a big one we're going to talk about in this unit, and that's enthalpy. Okay, enthalpy delta H is a state function, so it only depends on the initial and final states, not how you get there. Um, the change in pressure, change in temperature, change in volume, as we've discussed, Altitude, mass, chemical composition, these things are state functions. Okay, so I've mentioned paths, but there is a path function. There are functions that depend on the path taken, getting from the initial state to the final state. And we call those path functions. So that means it does depend on whether you go you know, all around Robin Hood's barn, or if you go directly there, okay? So it does depend on the path, so you'll get a different value for your answer depending on the path that was taken. All right, so two path functions that we have are work and heat, okay? So I've given 
one equation for work, but there are others that would give us a different value for work than what we would calculate using the function that we have. And an example, kind of a way to think about it, is if you have two rock climbers of equal mass, okay, so let's say they have a boat down here and they're going to scale this cliff, okay, so one of them is really good at it and he just goes right up the cliff, okay, and the other one is more of a novice and he is strapped in so he doesn't get hurt, but he's going to go up a little bit, but then he backslides, goes up a little bit, backslides a little bit more, might rest on this ledge, you know, for a little while, then goes up and does some more, okay, and then rest or backslide back to here, all right? And so bottom line is this novice climber is going to end up spending a lot more energy or doing a lot more work to get to the top of the cliff, okay? So that's the difference between a path and a state function. In a state function, so altitude, for instance, it only depends on where you start and where you end. So that would be the state function for this cliff where the two rock climbers, one of them who just goes directly up and the other who backslides a lot, they're going to have different amounts of work and work is a path function. Okay, so what should you be able to do so far? So you should be able to define a state function. Only the initial and final states matter, not how you get there. You should be able to recognize state functions from examples given, okay? You should also be able to define a path function and recognize examples of those path functions.